Justin, I'm sure that that, uh, that beautiful home of yours in Cape Town is calling you. It's been a long season, but it's been a very good season by all accounts. Butterfly Beauty is the horse that gets you started. On the final day of the KwaZulu-Natal champion season, what are you expecting? The pedigree suggests that she, she'll go the mile. I don't know, a lot of horses normally at this age don't. So I think that's in her favour. She she was very green at Gravel first time out. I think she's got a small chance. We're there for a bit of hope. Um, but certainly uh, one of the outsiders in the race. To a super champion, a filly that needs no introduction. Captain's Ransom finds herself at the top of the boards against the boys over a trip that she's more than comfortable with. Yes, look, I think her... her, her Perfect distance would be 14, seven furlongs a mile, I think are her best. Um, I, I, she was very revved up on July day. Uh, and I think what was more the, the issue, especially for the visitors, uh, the local horses, they were pretty, pretty much used to it. But the delay in the parade ring, you know, someone just had to say, listen, guys, there's a 20 minute delay until the next race. And nope, not one person said a word. She's done really well into the race. Um, obviously, there has to be a concern about Gravel, whether uh, the lights were the issue or whatever it is. At least this way we'll figure it out. But um, I don't think she'll more than likely race again in Natal. So I think this will probably be her. She is racing another year, but I, I don't think Natal will be on the cards. Yeah. I don't, this will probably be her swan song. So I really hope for the followers here in Natal, it's a good one. Look, I don't want to stir up uh, any unnecessary angst, but uh, I was there when it happened. And I just wanted to ask you, do you think that that uh, rather circumstantial incident that happened on the Thursday before her race had anything to do with her taking the edge off her slightly? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I had a lot of uh, unlucky things happen, which normally don't happen into the race, you know. But, you know, you don't want to complain because if I had won, I would have complained. <laughs> But you don't want to be the guy that's losing and complaining. So I can't, uh, they were just, uh, as I said, I mean, take nothing away from the winners and the other horses that were in the same boat in a way on the day. They, they, they handled it better. We didn't. So um, I, I, I blame myself. I, um, I, I, these things all just unfolded as the race meeting went. And, and I was just, as you can see on, on Gold Cup Day, I've cut back on, on a lot of runners. You know, you're not going to see do it again. He was meant to run. We've just come with a skeleton team, and, and I hope that those horses run well and, and we can end the season positively and, uh, you know, plan better next year when these things happen on, on big days. Well, I'm going to be your scribe, and I'm going to take out the word skeleton. I'm going to add selective. I think that's more what it is. Yes, correct. <laughs> right, Salvatore Mundi, he's a... Proper stayer, plenty of class, and he has every right to be in the shakeup. Yes, he he does. But but I had other horses planned for this race that may have been more of a big runner in this race in in a way because it's very competitive. I think he in the right type of race he's he's a, a game horse, but um, you know a horse like One Way Traffic was my Gold Cup horse, and we've decided that he's a horse that we want to rather earmark for other races in the future i've decided not to run him salvador mundi is the dark horse i would say 54 kilos drawn badly got a lot against him and quite frankly a lot of my jockeys all bailed on me so if that's anything look at where they've gone so very interesting the jockeys that normally ride for my my horse they've they've chosen other horses um and i think you've got to respect that look at what they've chosen I do think a horse like Mike DeCox, uh, uh, three-year-old, I'm very surprised to see him in this race. And the funny thing is, whenever Mike runs a horse like that in a race like this, respect it. Well, I think he won it with a three-year-old in June. Ancestral, the horse that came from Ellen Higg. Ancestral four, yeah. Ancestral four, I'll never forget a grey. Funny enough, that led me to running a three-year-old in the Gold Cup. I wasn't as fortunate as Mike. <laughs> and I've never done it since. So... It's something that Mike is very good at. The horses come ready. They come from Joburg. They, they have had a, 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 a lot of racing and they, they fit and they're strong. So I think those, those type of horses, they, they're way better than what should be in a race like this. So I think you've got to really respect that. And, and we're hoping to, to maybe cause a little upset or something like that, but it would be an upset. He, he's a lovely horse. He, we'll have our fun with him in the summer. And we're just looking forward to him pulling up and coming out of the race uh, uh, okay. The Nick Johnson colours hold the aces for the uh, Champions Cup. If my memory serves me correctly, it would be an unprecedented 
third consecutive victory in this race. He's the best miler in the country by country mile. Great run in the Hollywood Bets July. Terrific run in the Gold Challenge where no luck came his way. This is the swan song for him. Yeah, look, I think the, the Gold Challenge was a sign of things. You know, he, he apparently he, he fell out the gates. He got that in, in doing that, he was far too far back and then, you know, had to try and couldn't get a run in the straight and was, un, you know, it was, it was all pear shape. It really, um, oh, I don't know where who to blame me, blame whatever, you know. Maybe there were decisions that should have been made earlier in the season. I didn't make those decisions, so blame me. Doing very well at home. I think Richard back up is a... Richard always wanted to ride this horse. He's always He was pretty much on song to ride it, and uh, um, he then opted to ride something else somewhere and, and, and it went in array. He's been riding the horse every day here. It's made a big difference. I do think you're going to see a big run from Jet Dark. For me, the race in the Hollywood Durban July was phenomenal. A lot of guys had excuses. He came around all of them with top weight. Incredible run. Um, a horse that uh, is really impressing me as an as a individual, as a consistency, all those things. Um, and he's come out of the race so tough and you know, well, so I'm amazed. I'm very impressed by this horse. This is this is the, the most I've impressed I've been about him now in his four-year-old career. I think he's just really turning into what is a, he's a hard nut to crack. And only through, you know, Gravel being the track it is where you just get, you can find a lot of trouble. Um, it's taken the gloss off his, off his season, I think. He's uh, really, uh, here, as you said, open space, less horses, um, all of high quality. I think it, it'll take a very good horse to beat him. I really mean that. Richard Ferry back on is a big, big plus for, for him. Um, as I said, uh, the guys have got their work cut out here. And finally, Justin, on that score, I know tactics are something that one tries to keep a little bit confidential, but it's, it's not rocket science to see that Crown Tower's preferred style of racing is to go handy. Do you think he could play an instrumental in role in making sure that there is no crawl in this race? You know, we played with it here in Natal. It's unbelievable. I mean, they used to call us the Cape Crawl. They actually had a word for it the other day. I actually laughed. They've got a nickname for it here in Natal now. Um, they go slow. Uh, it, it's um, I don't know the reason or what. The Hollywood it? hustle. The Hollywood hustle. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, which, is all, which is good for some people. It, it's what you do, you know, um, tactically wise. But uh, we just want, it, at, the, at this level, you want just a, a well-run race. We're not looking for fast pace. We just don't want a slow pace. And you want an even pace. That's all we're looking for. Because then the best horse wins. And I think that's important to the punters. I think what we've seen lately um, is not fair on the punter. It's just um, you're, you're, the good horse is normally medium placed in a race. Come into the straight, trouble, 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 look jock under pressure. It's not good for our racing, I don't think. So I do try when I can to ensure that there's a, a level of, of, of pace in a race. So Crown Tower is that dangerous horse where they, they let him go, but you can never let him go too far because don't count him out. He can, he can run to the line. His last run was 2,200. Some... Jockey decided to do pace work with him for the entire 2,200. In that, they both fell in a hole. So um, the time was two seconds faster than the Hollywood Bets July, and you won the race. So you're saying that one-way traffic saying, ran two seconds faster than he wasn't in the July. So yeah. had he been in the July? <laughs> well, I don't know if he'd have beaten Do It Again or Jet Dark, but he should have been. You know, I know, I know what you're thinking. Next year, next year. <laughs> Next year, whenever I get a horse eliminated here in Natal, the next year it comes back twice a horse. Yeah. Uh, uh, they they do have the honour of eliminating Rio Kawari in the South African Sprint in the Golden Horseshoe Sprint. So the next year he was the best sprint in the country. So I think it's an omen that I got. It's raining. William was scratched, was eliminated this season. I love it because it it, it gives me that um, oomph to go and prove them wrong. So uh, I think Crown Tower run a his a creditable race, and uh, you know you never know.